Rob Portman is a is a, uh, a Republican, obviously, and he, he's not running for re-election. But he was a you know he's been around a long time, office of uh, OMB director. So I, I so I think he might have some relevant things to say. I don't know if you saw his op-ed piece today, but it, it's kind of simple for the case that he makes against this bill, and that is that it that manufacturers would definitely be shouldering. A lot of this, uh, 50 percent of it, would, would hit manufacturers. And once that happens, you, you can just connect the dots to workers at those places and to consumers that buy whatever the, the manufacturers are making. And it, it certainly doesn't look like an Inflation Reduction Act, uh, but there are some, I, I think, unintended consequences that would not be good. Have you done analysis that, that confirms I've done that? some, Joe. Well, first, uh, this is false advertising on a scale that I've never seen before. Whoever named this bill the Inflation Reduction Act should be ashamed of themselves. It does not reduce inflate, uh, inflation. In fact, the Penn and Wharton model estimates that it will increase inflationary pressures through 2024, won't reduce the deficit until after 2027. Uh, you know, uh, in, in addition to that, you know, there's no question that we're going to have to have comprehensive tax reform that generates more revenues. We're going to have to reprioritize discretionary spending and reduce it. We're going to have to end up reforming our mandatory spending programs. We're going to have to do it. But this is not the time. We, we have inflationary pressures right now. We have very slow or negative economic growth, uh, bipartisan agreement over years that this is not the time. To, uh, to, to raise taxes, although ultimately we're going to have to. This is pure politics. And there, there are some things, though, that, that even Republicans have talked about it in the past. David, could you cherry pick things that- Yeah, no, I, think, I, I, I do think there are positive provisions in this bill, although they are controversial, all right? I have long been for giving uh, the government the ability to negotiate for prescription drug prices. Uh, the argument against that is it's going to undercut innovation and R&D and things of that nature. We're already uh, bearing too much of the burden of global R&D for prescription drugs. Something's got to change. The other thing you ought to think about is not allow advertising of prescription drugs, which fuels demand. Uh, you know, we're the only major industrialized nation, uh, in, to my knowledge, that allows advertising of prescription drugs. For that reason, it just increases demand and prices as well. Uh, their carried interest, I think there needs to be a change in carried interest. It shouldn't be taxed at capital gains rate. It should be taxed when realized at ordinary income rates. Uh, you know, that's not going to have a significant impact on, uh, on, econ on economic growth or inflation. So there are positive elements, don't get me wrong. But I this is all... <laughs> Politics, because they've spent trillions of dollars, enabled, by the way, by the Federal Reserve, holding down interest rates artificially low, self-dealing in trillions of dollars of U.S. debt. And I'm convinced, Joe, and I hope we can come back to this, the only way we're going to restore fiscal sanity and sustainability is through a constitutional amendment that focuses on stabilizing debt to GDP at a reasonable level. And I'm working hard, along with others, for that right now.